Greetings out there in music land. I'm Ken the Metal Professor. I am the host of Mostly Metal, which is broadcast on WVLP in Valparaiso, Indiana, 103.1 FM for people in town. It's a small town, so not many people are going to listen there. You can also catch us streaming at WVLP.org. Most weeks recently, I've been building into my set list for my show, Top 10 Lists, and then I've been making these videos to go along with that. This week on tap has been Candle Mass. Now the, the show airs Wednesdays at 10 p.m. U.S. Central Time and replays Sunday nights at 8 p.m. U.S. Central Time. I'm a couple of days behind. Today's Thursday, so uh, Wednesday nights episode or Wednesday night's offering of the episode has already been up and out but if you want to listen to the songs I'm going to talk about then feel free to tune in Sunday night or I'm sure you can find everything online I am pretty sure that almost everything in my list in fact I'm certain that everything in my list can be found on Spotify Candlemass is a doom metal band from Sweden, so if you haven't heard of them and you're into Black Sabbath, then you should check out Candlemass. They have 12 full-length studio albums, a couple of EPs. Actually, their most recent one from this year, 2020, is an EP called The Pendulum. There's not a whole lot there. I think three full-length songs and a handful of little minute-and-a-half, two-minute acoustic guitar interludes. Uh, but before that, 12 full-length studio albums, musical chairs in the vocalist position. Now, I don't have a whole lot I can say about each individual album as I go through them, so before I do my list, let me just you know set the stage for people that aren't that familiar. They released their debut album in 1986 called Epicus Dumicus Metallicus, and the vocalist was Johann Lanquist. He was there for that album. After that, Messiah Marcolin took over on vocals, uh, the man of the large hair and the priestly gowns and the amazing voice. He was there for three albums. And then things kind of took a detour where the band was more of a side project for one of the remaining members. And in that period, Thomas Vikstrom and Bjorn Flodquist were the vocalists. And then Messiah Marcolin came back to give it a try again for one album. And then there were three albums where Mr. Robert Lowe came over from the American doom metal band Solitude Iternus to do the singing. And then most recently in 2019, the very original vocalist, Johan Lanquist, from their first debut, rejoined the band, and he's still there. So they've been having this game of leapfrog with their vocalists. And so I think of the albums sort of as in clusters in terms of, you know, okay, here are the three Messiah Mercolin albums, here are the three Robert Lowe albums, and my ranking of the albums is going to be essentially based on those groupings. Um, you won't see, you know, one album from one person way up here and the other albums way down here you know they're, they're mixed a little bit but not much so 12 albums all together i'll start with my least favorite which is chapter six uh, this came out in 1992 a couple of good tracks on here when the runes speak or sorry where the runes speak and aftermath this is one of those albums that was in that sort of strange transition period Leif Edling is the bass player for the band. He is the person who has been with the band through its entirety. There are, there are other people that have been there for a lot of it, but he is the one who's been there for its entirety. During that time, he also had uh, other, another project called Abstract Algebra, and there, were, there was a period of three albums where the candle mass sound sort of diverted away from its classic doom metal sound and inched over towards this abstract algebra sound. Chapter 6 is one of those albums, and I don't really enjoy it that much. And also for the same reason, coming in at number 11 from The Thirteenth Sun in 1999, Tote, T-O-T, and Elephant Star are a couple of good tracks that I like. And then at number 10, Dactylus, Glomerata, uh, the third of these three sort of transition albums. I don't know what else to call them. This is from 1998. It, I still see the Black and Lidocaine God are, are pretty good. But again, all, those three albums together to me form a bundle. They're my least favorite of the Candlemass discography, and so that bundle fits there at the bottom of my preference ranking. 
Coming in at number nine is Psalm of the Dead from 2012. This is one that does have Robert Lowe on vocals. Prophet and Dancing in the Temple and the title track are all great. On this album, I re- there's a heavy organ presence, musical organ, and I really dig that sound. But one of the reasons I've always loved Candle Mass is the interplay between the doom and the melodic nature, and I wasn't picking up on as much of that melodic nature on this album. And the closing track in particular is kind of weird, so you can go check that out and uh, see what's going on with that. But altogether, that's the weakest of the Robert Lowe albums. At number eight, I will put The Door to Doom, uh, the most recent full length from 2019. This is where Johan Lanquist has come back from the debut album. So that's like, third, what, 32 years apart. So a little bit of gray hair, I'm, I'm assuming. Bridge of the Blind is a great track. The Omega Circle is good, and the cherry on the what would the cherry be on the cherry on the pile of whipped cream that's on top of the ice i never mind it was a bad metaphor but the the prize on this album is the song astoralis the great octopus not only is it a great song with a great video but tony iomi guests in this album or in this song and it's it's pretty good i like the lovecraftian uh, mode of that title now It's a pretty good album. There are some high points on it, but as a beginning to end listening experience to me, it's kind of varied and I don't like it as much as others. Number seven is the self-titled Candle Mass. This is not their debut. This is sort of a comeback album in 2005. Messiah Marcolin is on vocals. Remember, he was on three of the almost original albums and then he disappeared for a while. This is the one he came back for. Black Dwarf is the opener. It's a killer tune. Seven Silver Keys is great. Witches is great. And Born in a Tank. I just love that song title. Those are all highlights. This is a pretty good album, but it doesn't hold a candle to the other earlier Messiah Marcolin albums. So those other three are going to be grouped a little bit higher up here, but we're getting close. Number six and number five are the other two Robert Lowe albums. Now, I will say number six is King of the Grey Islands, and number five is Death Magic Doom. That's what I'm saying, but tomorrow I might wake up and flip them because these two are so close to each other. King of the Grey Islands was the first Robert Lowe album in 2007 and Death Magic Doom in 2009. King of the Grey Islands I enjoyed right off the bat. Uh, Emperor of the Void kicks off. I mean, Robert Lowe's making his presence felt in that song. It's amazing. Of Stars and Smoke is great. Clear Sight could be my favorite song on the album. Actually, no, it's not. It's my second favorite song on the album. And then on Death Magic Doom, songs like Hammer of Doom, The Bleeding Baroness, If I Ever Die is a smoking open, opening track. That album is a grower of an album. So King of the Grey Islands, I really liked the first time I heard it. Death Magic Doom, I heard it. And I was like, eh. But then the more I listen to it, the farther it creeps up that list. And that album actually started when I started fiddling with this list it started farther down and the more i heard it i was like no this is better no this is better and i think i finally found where it fits in because coming next is now messiah mark holen uh, tales of creation from 1989 this is the third album he was on not as good as the other two which are coming soon uh, dark reflections the edge of heaven a tale of creation those are all great Taking a break from Messiah, though, at number three, I'll put Epicus Dumicus Metallicus. This is their debut. Uh, Man, I wish I was into um, as much heavy metal when this came out. I would have loved to have been there to hear it for the very first time. Unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, I got into Candlemass sort of at the end of Messiah Marcolin's first first foray in the band. So I got used to Messiah Marcolin. So going back and hearing this, it was a little bit of a shift. But Solitude is uh, one of their best songs. Black Oak Wielder, Under the Oak is great. That song was so good, they did a new version of it on Tales of Creation. Um, But yeah, that was a tremendous debut album. But I like the other two Messiah Marcolin albums better, possibly because I heard them first, and his is the voice that I got used to. He just has a piercing melodic voice it's very clean it's not a high-pitched voice but it's piercing if that makes sense Uh, unlike anybody else so my number two album is ancient dreams from 1988 mirror mirror and a cry from the crypt 
and the Bells of Acheron are my favorite songs there. And my favorite Candlemas album is Nightfall from 1987. I like the whole album, but if I have to pick, At the Gallows End, Samarathon, Mourner's Lament, and Bewitched would be my favorite tracks. So again, if you're a fan of Sabbath and you haven't heard Candlemas, I would recommend going back and listening to Nightfall. And if you don't like that, then go listen to, say, King of the Grey Islands, because it's the production gets much better. It's a thicker, juicier sound. It's a different vocalist, so maybe that'll maybe that'll get you. Try their debut if you're attuned to albums from the 80s where the production isn't quite as crisp and thick and juicy, but very, very doomy. Uh, I wouldn't recommend breaking in the candle mass from that trio of three that I started with. Uh, but if you don't like the Messiah albums and you don't like the Robert Lowe albums, then there goes at least half of their discography anyway, so just move on from there. Now I'm going to pause and set up my top 10 favorite songs, which were part of my show this week on Mostly Metal. So here we go with my top 10 favorite songs by Candlemas. These are put into Mostly Metal this week. Still a chance to listen this coming Sunday night, July 5th, 8 p.m. U.S. Central Time. At number 10, I'm going to put The Bleeding Baroness off of Death Magic Doom from 2009. Uh, this is one with Robert Lowe on vocals. You're, as I mentioned in the preference rankings, my favorite Candle Mask was the Messiah Marcolin album. So you're going to see that flavoring to this top 10 list. But I'm starting out with some Robert Lowe. At number 9, though, right over to Messiah Marcolin. Now, not during his original stint in the band, but from his return for one whole album, Candlemas, uh, the song called Witches in 2005. Uh, this does have an F-bomb in it, so I had to bleep that out to put it on the radio, but it's still good. At number eight, Emperor of the Void off of King of the Grey Islands. This is the first song that anybody heard from, uh, from Robert Lowe on a full length. I know he did an EP with them, and I don't remember if that EP came out before King of the Grey Islands, but this is the first full-length CD uh, that Candlemas. I've got the fan going next to me because it's hot in the basement. It's not supposed to be hot because the basement is the coolest part in the house, right? But it's been around 90 here for a couple of days, and it's going to continue to be in the upper 80s and low 90s for several days, and our, our AC unit is not keeping up as good as it did last year. So I've got the fan on, but it's starting to blow my hair. My hair, because my worked out and my hair was wet and now it's getting dry and now it's blowing around i mean i'm just gonna i should probably stop my recording but never mind we're all friends here you can watch me move a fan right for those of you in the smarter portions of the world that go with metric 90 degrees fahrenheit is about equal to uh fucking hot so after number eight emperor of the void off of king of the gray islands i'm gonna put uh, Dancing in the Temple, parentheses, of the Mad Queen Bee off of Psalm of the Dead. Now, this is a faster-paced tune. It's a short tune. It's like three and a half minutes long, but it's got a good pop to it. And I, I really like it, even though it's quite different from anything else on the album. Now, here's the oddball. In my preference ranking, I talked about the three albums in that sort of weird, almost um, abstract algebra part two side project version of Candlemas. I don't like much of it. But off of Dactylus Glomerata, boy, is Lidocaine God a smoking song. So I put that one at number six. If you're going to listen to anything from that era of the band, go for Lidocaine God. Again, it's not doom for, per se. It's fast, uh, but it's still, it's still very, very heavy. From here on out, we're heading for older Candlemas. At number five, The Bells of Acheron off of Ancient Dreams from 1988. This is my favorite song off that album. These songs tend to be longer, six to seven minutes, and they breathe. Doom is a strange creature in that it is slow, right, obviously, and it either catches you or it doesn't. And if it doesn't catch you, and these songs live there for six or seven minutes that can be sort of a a long and uh, uninteresting listening experience but fortunately that doesn't happen with these songs even though they're very slow paced the mood is just right and sitting with a song where you get to know the riffs and you get to know the chorus even though it's slow and it goes for six or seven minutes it is just fine 
The Edge of Heaven off of Tales of Creation from 1989 at my number four again. The same sort of thing, a longer song, very slow. If it didn't appeal to me, it would be a very, very long song, but uh, I can't get enough of it. Number three, Samarathon off of Nightfall from 1987. Again, Nightfall being my favorite Candlemas album. I will put another song from this album farther up this list, but Samarathon is great. It actually has a nice little story in the song, but it's just one where the, the melody line, the very slow melody line that Messiah Marcolin puts into his vocals on top of the slow music that starts kind of acoustically is just tremendous. At number two, I'll put Solitude off of Epicus Dumicus Metallicus, their debut from 1986, Johann Lanquist on vocals here. This is just a tremendous doom metal song that any doom metal fan should have in their music library. It's just awesome. And then at number one, I'm going to put At the Gallows End off of Nightfall. The opening lyrical line, Sunrise I Greet You, sounds like a happy song, and then it goes downhill from there. I mean, this is doom after all, but I just love that interplay between the, the melody line that Marcia Marcolin puts in, the heaviness of the music, the, the words. I, a lot of times I don't pay attention to lyrics, but when they're so upfront and clear like that, it's hard not to. It's almost like a hymn with electric guitars behind it. So if you haven't heard it, I would go check it out. Now I will say it's kind of it, it's weird. I mean, that song at the gallows end is my favorite Candlemas song, but I would still say that if you've never heard Candlemas and you're a Doom fan, if you want the classic Candlemas song, go listen to Solitude. I happen to like At the Gallows End better, but I think Solitude is just more of a linchpin Doom metal song than At the Gallows End might be. So there. That is the end of my story about Candlemas. I hope you liked it. I hope you go out and explore with some of this music. I've been alternating metal and rock, so next week my top 10 list is going to come from Styx. And I've been working on it. That's a hard one to put together. We'll see how it goes. It's not going to include Babe. <laughs>